And this is a market that's like a, you know, six-year-old at a, at, a, at, a, at a carnival on crack. I thought what I would do is just start off you know, I hate to play, you know, macroeconomist or whatever, but, you know, there are certain things that are going on um, that probably are just worth, I don't like influencing trading, but, you know, markets tell a picture over time. What I've got on the top chart is the HYG. This is the corporate bond market, and it's an indication of, you know, uh, corporate interest rates. And you can see that this chart has been rolling over and it's going in the wrong direction. So the more prices decline, the more you know, rates go higher. And eventually this will lead to you know, bankruptcies and liquidations. And you know, this is just going in the wrong direction. And so this is an indication of rates. And to me, it's not only an indication of where rates are going, but you can see how fast this has been. You know, typically, you know, this is what rates you know, typically do. But you can see the pace and, and the, the rate of decline. So it's my mind that will destabilize the financial markets. Then in the second chart, this is crude oil that's been you know, going up to 40-year you know, highs here. And we've got you know, a Super Bowl event tomorrow uh, in the stock market. We've got consumer price index, which you know, the, the, you know, the Federal Reserve will use as a proxy as to you know, how strong, you know, tough to go you know, in terms of tightening or what have you. And with crude going straight up, I can't see how CPI is going to be a good number. So this is why I was also queasy having all these long assets. I'm going, am I going into that number with this? And I go, no. Um, this chart is the XHB. This is the Home Builders ETF. And we see a little nice, you know, double top here and this going straight down. So, you know, this is no surprise as interest rates are going up you know, home builder fortunes are going down. Now there's a formula on Wall Street. You know, uh, if you have five plus five, you're gonna get a recession. So everyone's been saying, are we gonna get a recession? You know, you know, are we not? And so, you know, numbers don't lie. And so when you get north of $5 a, a tank on gas, which, you know, it's probably seven bucks in California now, and then you get 5% on mortgage rates, which we're north of 5% now, this is a flashing that. So every day, is there gonna be a recession? Is there not gonna be a recession? There's gonna be a recession. You know, if you look at the cycles of crude oil, whenever it ever goes above normal, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, you know, 2000s, uh, whenever it goes above trend, it's followed by a recession. So we're at 130 on crude oil, and uh, you know uh, whether it's you know this year, the first half of next year, uh, it's it's coming. Um, you know we got you know the Fed got us into a really bad situation by being complacent about inflation. Now they have to go the other way, and in order to go the other way, they need to just kill demand, kill the economy and kill the stock market. And that's what we're seeing. So this is the IGV, this is the growth ETF, and by and large, you know, heading lower with home builders, with advancing crude, with higher interest rates. And then the last chart is kind of interesting, is the XLF. So these are the financial and bank stocks. And I know these are pretty small charts, but there's, you know, nice little double top there. And this is kind of going in the wrong direction. So as interest rates rise, you know, banks, you know, typically make uh, uh, money on the spread, but bank stocks are, you know, going in the wrong way and, you know, just flashing in melee. So, you know, the, the, the upshot of this is we have a stagflation scenario where we have, you know, higher inflation, and you know, higher interest rates killing the economy. And then you've got that five and five, $5 a gas on crude, 5% on mortgages. And so 
I think we're going into the shit or wow, the market's really crashing now. I'm just watching this. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to make a so, nice, nice amount. Is it of worth, is there anything worth jumping in on the pre-market short today then? Try and uh, catch yeah, some of this. Yeah. So I just kind of wanted to, you know, so let me just kind of, you know, I feel really bad because yesterday I was all excited, you know, and I, I know you guys get hopped up and, you know, I got along the queues and, you know, but the thing is what I want to try and do is just um, kind of inform you guys as to, um, you know, what's, and, and, and sometimes again, your mind doesn't see certain things. And I really blame myself, um, you know, for kind of, you know, getting a little carried away yesterday. You know, sometimes when you're long everything and you see the green numbers and it, 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 it really, sometimes your mind just, you don't see it. And I only saw it afterwards. So this was yesterday. We were looking at kind of um, what could be construed as a, you know, a bit of a bottom here, markets going higher. And then, you know, I kind of look at price action where you see, you know, made a new low, close on the high, made a new low, close. So I kind of saw this bottom and then the closes. And visually, I kind of saw, thought, well, maybe we could still have an extension. And, you know, I rushed in, you know, to buy these cues. It opened lower and then it did go higher. But so this is, so first off, let's just look at this last latest grouping of prices right here. This is a coil. Right. You have, you know, all of these inside bars, all of these bars effectively banging inside the range of each other. So my whole thing is that these kind of coils, they build energy to uncork one way or the other. And my eye, you know, was kind of seeing it, you know, that maybe it still had some upside. Maybe, it, you know, had to go and fill this and what have you. But then uh, I started looking at it a different way. And, you know, typically when you know, markets charge to one level or another. And they charge to, you know, an all-time high for that, you know, particular cycle. You know, so when, you know, markets close here, it's, they close on an all-time high. And then you're saying, well, this is an uptrend. It's close at a high. But then, you know, I, you know, I have this internal conversation the next day. Well, what happened? Well, it didn't make a new high. It didn't make a new high. It didn't make a new high. And then it, you know, came up here. And then again, once you, you know, your mind is kind of faked out that we're going to charge back here, but you can see it still didn't make a new high. So it's like kind of pushing on a string. This market is pushing, but it can't, it's stalling out. So these are, you know, things where you really have to be careful. It's like kind of, I always use that metaphor of that, you know, airplane at a, you know, uh, you know, kite show, whatever it is. And you see these things go straight up into the sky and then they just run out of, you know, inertia and you know, bring them back to earth. They just, you know, you can't, they don't have enough power to sustain. So at some point the market runs out of power and, 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 you know, this is what's been happening here. You can see we had this run up here and we made a new high for this run up, but then what happened the next day? Well, we didn't make a new high. We didn't make a new high. We didn't make a new high. And then yesterday prices actually crashed a little bit and you know went and finished like this so you know this is stalling out in what you know i feel is inherently a bear market you know there are whole times of times where you know like i did in the last couple of days i made hundreds of thousands of dollars on what i call a counter trend move and sometimes these counter trend moves can be breathtaking they are sharp they are hard and they get your mind thinking, well, geez, it's all going green. You know, I can't be on the other side. But, you know, if you look at the bigger picture here, this is a bear market. So all of these are bear market rallies. And so this is kind of the thing that, you know, I was sharing on Monday that I'm really queasy. I'm long all these assets. You know, I'm playing the short wave. The short wave could still last another three weeks. But eventually, you know, I expect that bigger wave to come in and I don't want to drown when it, you know, it, it comes over my head. And I think that's the danger right now is that the big wave is going to kick in. And tomorrow we have this catalyst. We have this, you know, uh, consumer price index, which is, you know, in and of itself, it's a number, but it's going to be a proxy for, you know, 
where we are you know, in terms of inflation, which you know to me is rampant. You know, when you've got 130 crude, hard to see that we're going to have a benign inflation number. But I don't want to play economist. I'm looking at the markets. The markets are inherently in a bear phase. And to me, you kind of have this rounding top and it's, you know, collectively running out of steam. So you can see, yeah, 45, it's 1.3 million. 1.3 million dollars short. So pop out a profit for 118,000 there. So you can see how this is going crazy now. You can see how the market just going nuts. At like a, a million six on this position. I'm showing right now $23,000 gain.